to start in 2021 with uh, a new Club World Cup, a revamped Club World Cup in the slot of uh, the Confederations Cup, so from, uh, I think, 17th of June to 4th of July or something along these dates of 2021 in two and a half years. From now, the world will see a real Club World Cup where the best teams in the club will compete to crown the club world champion. There have been some very positive discussions lately uh, with the uh, UEFA president, with UEFA. Constructive dialogue, even though, of course, uh, there are on some topics different points of view, but we are moving, we are moving forward. We had the responsibility, we have the responsibility to take decisions for FIFA, and we took the decision, and I'm sure that uh, uh, in the next few weeks, um, even the discussions with UEFA uh, will bear some positive fruits. Certainly, this is the spirit of uh, today's meeting and of uh, the most recent uh, discussions we had. So constructive, positive, but uh, more importantly, FIFA has decided. No vamos a, a jugar esta competición uh, en Qatar porque es en junio y julio y entonces es un poquito uh, demasiado caliente y esta fue la decisión por la cual el Mundial 2022 se, juega, se va a jugar en noviembre y diciembre. Entonces vamos a ver uh, dónde uh, se va a celebrar este primer uh, Mundial Real uh, de uh, clubes en el mundo. We are looking into the matter and seeing whether it's possible, whether it is feasible to anticipate this already in 22. If it is feasible, if it is possible, great. If it is not feasible, if it is not possible, great. But I think as FIFA we have the duty to look into that. We consulted all our associations, 90% are of course in favour of an increase. Um, but it's not uh, uh, as easy as that. You cannot just uh, uh, take a simple decision. You have to analyze these matters very carefully. And we are working very closely with uh, Qatar to see what uh, uh, proposals can be made. What is clear is that if we were to increase to 48 teams, and we will decide this in June, then some games would have to be hosted by some neighboring countries of Qatar, and we, together with uh, our partners from Qatar, will present uh, eventually a proposal in this, um, in this respect. One of the novelties of this Women's World Cup will be that we will be using VAR for the Women's World Cup as well, the same as we did for the Men's World Cup. You mentioned the, the terrible um, tragedy which happened uh, earlier today in, uh, in New Zealand. I've been to New Zealand, I was there last week, um, and it uh, was for the first time, actually, in, in, in my life, and I've seen uh, um, a beautiful country, I've seen uh, people living uh, together in, in harmony from different ethnicities uh, and different religions, and, uh, and I was really pleased with that visit in New Zealand, and uh, this morning when, uh, when I woke up and when I saw the news, I felt like everyone, I think, speechless. It's a terrible tragedy. Our sympathy goes, of course, with the families, with the friends of those who have lost their lives. These are events, incidents, tragedies that we would never like to witness. 
Human beings uh, who have uh, been done so many good things in the world are also capable of the worst, as we have sadly seen. And uh, at this moment, I think it's just the time for um, thinking on, on the victims, for thinking on their families, for sending them a big hug, even though words cannot help, cannot heal, cannot do anything and uh, trying to uh, take also this incident, as many others, as lessons for all of us, to try to be a little bit better, to try to be a little bit more open and more tolerant in the world. And I don't want to say football contributes to that. It's not the moment for this stuff. It's just a moment of mourning. It's the moment of uh, thinking, of sitting down, of putting the priorities again right. And uh, I think this is yeah, what I want to say about uh, this terrible tragedy in, uh, in New Zealand. Travel back home. Bye-bye.